Was it a car crash early this morning? Chamber meeting you missed? Find out when you're ready. Rusty, I need this story. No one else has my connections to this family. This is personal. If I give you Katie's story and you mess it up, that'll be your last chance. Something doesn't add up. Why were these four people in the same car? This goes deep. We need to clean this up. Henry was in that car. Those associated with kidnapping, human trafficking, and Satanism? What was Katie doing with that guy? And not one news outlet to date has even mentioned his name. Maybe this story will get me noticed. <laughs> yeah, it'll get you noticed, all right. Presidents have been to that island. Sick what goes on there. What is it that you hope to gain? My freedom. Hmm. Not possible. Light versus dark. Game on. Hey, first, uh, first, uh, Tracy, Constantine, and Nicholas, thank you for your time. Uh, I know we're really short on time to, uh, uh, for this interview, but again, I want to thank the two, the two of you for, for the time and for the interview. And I want to I want to talk about you know this really interesting film, Dark State. It, you know, it just it just a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of truth behind it. It's really dark. I think the the the, the name is really fitting for the story. It's just a lot of truth about how you know how things are in Hollywood and 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 the you know, the greed at all. I think I, I like that. I, I like how how the story came about. So I think the first question, maybe Tracy has to answer it um, since you wrote it. Uh, how did the genesis of, of, of the story came about? How, I mean, how did you put all the different pieces that would be through, through the story together? That's a great question. I, I feel that um, it's really just my interest in the subject matter and what I like to read about and what I like to research. And um, that it's really about that age old battle of good versus evil, light versus dark. I think it just really comes down to that. And um, I guess just my desire to write a story that was relevant and timely and about that subject matter that I'm interested in. I, I hope Dark State does that, so. It, uh, it will certainly spark a conversation just because of the people, you know, I think the people that are like me into the whole Hollywood scene, they, they it will spark conversation between them and, and it will, you know, I, I think it's a trend that I've seen in a bunch of, you know, recent movies that just came out, keep putting, you know, the dark side of Hollywood and how everything goes about. I think you know, that, that's just something that, that, that really basically is going to come out pretty clearly. I want to jump in with uh, Constantine and Nicolas. When you were brought into the, the, the project, what was your first impressions? And, and, you know, once you saw how everything, you know, how, what, how the story was developed, what, what was your first in, you know, in your initial response, response to the story? Nicolas, maybe you first. Uh, my initial response to the story that, that I was initially hooked by uh, the breakdown that Tracy put out of Rusty, which I was invited to audition for, and that caught my interest. And it was actually just a very well-developed descriptive breakdown that it's sometimes more than you see. And so that drew me in to want to audition for it. Then I was uh, got the privilege to audition for it. And the more I got introduced to the sides and then the full script and then getting to um, talk with Tracy and see the scope of the plot and where she saw it going and how she saw me fitting into it. Um, it that, that was enough for me to just want to jump in with both feet. Um, just seeing a good story with a writer director that was, was so tied into it and, and, and so anxious to make her actors a part of the world and not just, this is what it is. Go read it. You talking prop go, it was, <laughs> let me bring you in and, and have you be a part of it. And then, um, you know, from there, there was nothing to not be excited about. I fully agree with Nicholas there. Absolutely. All of the above, uh, but definitely the title, the title jumped out at me. Um, the setting, uh, born in Brooklyn, New York, but I grew up in New Jersey. So all things weird, New Jersey, definitely sort of jump out at me. Uh, there is such a, a sort of indie scene here. Uh, um, a magazine, Weird New Jersey, I used to get as a kid, you know, and you would hear about stories from the Pine Barrens down in South Jersey there, where really this is set, uh, actually Tracy's hometown, and it just creates a great sort of uh, backdrop for an, uh, a, a dangerous kind of, uh, uh, you know, story like this, at least my, my sort of part of it, and uh, 
you know, I'm drawn to edgy characters for sure. Uh, I promise I'm a nice guy. You know, I don't know what it is. I get these, these, these sort of psycho uh, cult leader, you know, bloodthirsty vampire type guys. But um, hey, you know, I'll take it. It's nice work if you can get it. So for me, uh, the opportunity to work with a, a talented, you know, female boss like Tracy, very cool, you know, writer, director, great, great crew that she assembled. And for her to be able to pull this off in 13 days is extraordinary. You, I want to pick back on something you said. Uh, the, the, screen, the, the movie screams in the film from beginning to end. But I, and I say that in a positive way. I just, it's, you feel it. The aura, the whole scene, the whole, everything just feel, feel, feels indie and it feels, it feels good. Uh, I want to go back to Constantine and, and Nicholas and I want to talk a little about their character because I, I, just something that, Nicholas, that, that, that Constantine just said that struck, uh, you know, struck, stood out to me. Um, how much of their characters do you relate to them in some way? Because like, like Constantine just said, I'm not a psycho, so don't, everybody, don't even worry about it. So, but you're both actors, obviously, and this story that obviously is also, we're talking about, you know, Hollywood and, and films and everything. So everything's, everything, you know, everything revolves around the whole situation. So as actors and as persons, what does, what, what, if there's something from the character that, you know, you can say that I relate to that. Maybe you know, Nicholas first, because I know Constantine and those that are things. <laughs> oh, there was a tremendous amount that I related to about Rusty. And then there were things that, you know, uh, hopefully I saw mirrors in, uh, which can be difficult to play sometimes, but, uh, and then there were things that, you know, you kind of aspire to, you know, there's, there was that morality in him and that compass that was trying to do the right thing the, the whole way. And that's appealing to try to play that, that trying to be that white knight kind of guy and, um, and help everybody get to their best selves and the best conclusion. And yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to be the, you know, the white knight and, you know, he, and then he was, thrust into a lot of situations that didn't lend itself to that and he's overwhelmed by things that he can't control because he can't control them within himself a lot and so that conflict was very real so the i the idealistic nature of him colliding with um the fallibility of a human being is was just that was the great part because it's real it's not this one-dimensional plastic you know there you go oh look he's gonna go try to save the day and one way or the other it's these are his intentions. These are the conflicts, and that that creates something real. For sure. Um, again, it's it's fun to explore this sort of edgy um, place and character. And I think, I think absolutely, there is um, there's always something you have to find to relate to your life you know, whether you're substituting something in that is similar, you know, uh, you just have to do it, you know. Um, for me, yeah, I think it's all in the language there and you just really playing these moments. Um, I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy playing sort of, uh, I don't know, I don't know, this kind of dangerous kind of guy, for sure. It's fun to kind of step into those shoes. But yeah, you do have to try to still make it grounded and honest and earnest the best you can by maybe, yeah, like I said, substituting things in your own life. And I think we, uh, I think it's a real, it's, it's, it's a very real story, you know? And um, so, yeah, we can relate to it for sure. You got the name for those type of characters, so don't worry about it. You got the <laughs> name. <laughs> Tracy, I want to come back to you, and, and, and I want, without giving too much away, I don't want to give it any away, obviously. The ending, I don't think a lot of people are going to see the ending coming. The, the ending is not predictable, and, and that took me by surprise, so I commend you for that. But at the same time, really plays such a huge role in the narrative of the story. I think Greed, to me, is the protagonist of it all. The Greed is the protagonist of Hollywood as an, as an essence. Was that, you know, your intent from the beginning or did you, did you tweak it a little bit through the process or was that you were convinced that that's, this is how you, you want to end it? No, that, that ending was something that did not change. So that was what I wanted. I wanted you to um, relate to this character and relate to her all the way through, even when her choices 
were uh, weren't the best. Mm -hmm. um, one other point of the question, within a very short time, um, you know, maybe what do you think people will, you know, how people will react to the movie once they see it? How, or, or maybe you know, people in general that are not really are not as you know into the whole Hollywood scene as we are. What do you think they you want them to take away from what they are seeing from the story? Maybe Tracy, you first. I think that once um, a movie or a piece of music is out there, I really do think it takes on a life of its own. That's how I feel, don't you? <laughs> don't we all? Um, I, I never know how this, uh, this film will be interpreted or debated. I'm hoping that it will, uh, but I'm not sure. And I think that there's so many issues today that, uh, and so many things have come out in the past uh, three to four years that I, I really do believe that people will be debating this film if they see it and they, and they may even see it more than once. There's a lot of layers to the film. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, my hope is that it's seen and debated. Nicholas. You know, I, I think the great appeal of it is uh, trying to forecast what people are gonna take away or how they're gonna fall on mm -hmm. it is I think, <sighs> Who knows? I mean, that's what I think the great thing is. And that, that I think is the great part of the story is this is not a paint by numbers. You know what you're getting. And sometimes that's great. We sign up for that, you know, um, and it's very rewarding, but it's also very refreshing to go, go through a story where you don't know where it's going and where you really, it's, some people can guess, you know, God, God bless them. But I didn't, I was, I was shocked. And um, I think where people fall on it is going to be, it's going to be uh there's going to be both sides and i think that that's that's a really great thing Constantine, take it away the title dark state what's happening in the world deep state you have you know hollywood you have uh you know weinstein you have you know uh epstein you have trump you have QAnon. you have yeah. uh you know uh the female empowerment the you know the the B B L. I'm sorry, my daughter just keeps calling me nonstop. She knows not to do that. She just just keeps calling and calling. <laughs> she's fine. Um, she's at a friend's house. And, um, you know, so it's just all of these things that are kind of just all right now happening. Mm -hmm. Tracy wrote this, mm -hmm. you know, be just, you know, before Trump. So it's like, there's all this kind of stuff happening. Um, it's just, it's a right now film. It's an indie film. You have a wonderful, you know, female boss, you know, writer, director, you know. Um, you have a female lead, um, you know, support the independent projects and, uh, and get into it, man. March 19th, theatrical release, you know, um, New York, LA, Salt Lake, a few cities. Um, you have May 9th, a uh, digital release on demand. Um, it's so hard to even get a project to that. So it, it's, it's impossible mm -hmm. basically. And, uh, you know, so that she, um, you know, the fact that she made this happen um, is just, it's just it's rock and roll, man. So support independent projects. We all need your help. We're all, we're getting there, man. We're getting there with this whole, um, you know, lockdown and pandemic. And, you know, I, I got to just film a, a concert special over the last couple of days. And it just, just to be on stage and grab a microphone again, just felt so good. So uh, we're proud of this piece and uh, support it if you can, please. Completely agree with the two of you. I think the film is going to cast a conversation. It's going to basically put the spotlight on all the different layers, like Tracy said, that uh, they're, 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 they're being discussed on the story. And again, uh, uh, congratulate, I want to congratulate the two of you for a really fun and interesting subject matter. That, that, that's, what, that's the, way, the best way to describe it that we have on, on the story. And again, uh, finally, thank you for your, you know, really uh, for your time and, this, and the interview. Can I just say one thing? Because yep. I got a screenshot from my fabulous uh, producer, Michelle Gray. Looks yep. like uh, Dark State sold out in New York City on Friday night, March 19th, <laughs> the first two shows, which is 4 p.m. and 6 30. That's good news. That's really good okay. news. I'm kind of shocked. Ah. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> no. Uh, Raphael, how did you do this? Did, that, guess thank list. you, Raphael. I, 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 got, I, got, I got an exclusive. So you heard it first here. Nobody, yeah. nobody, we know that. No, hey. Again, how I, how I, the last thing that I said, I think it's gonna spark a conversation. I think all the different subjects that you throw into the gap of the whole story, like Constance said, 
a lot of people that you know understand what's what's happening will see it. And yeah, I mean, I absolutely love that. I, I didn't want to mention Weinstein or or because I, when I I heard his name on the okay, I know where we're going. And yeah, and yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. No, no, it's true. It's, you're you're laughing, but it's true. You know, it's just it's the reality of it all. I think, and this I think that's the thing that stands out from this movie. It's the reality of it all, and and how you know how the whole thing is how the world thing, you know how we see in the world and so again congratulations to you the three of you and again congratulations to new york and best of luck and thank you again for the interview thank you so much thanks Bobby. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.